In this lesson, we're going to use trigonometry and coordinate geometry to find the angle between a line and a plane. Okay, in this lesson we're going to take a look at very specifically the angle between a line and a plane. Now in a previous lesson we, we looked at uh, applying trigonometry to issues of three-dimensional coordinate geometry and, and this topic has already come up. We've already done questions like this. In fact, we had a, a bit of a discussion about this. But here we're going to throw a little bit of vocabulary on it and we're going to make this the primary focus of the work that we're doing right now. So we're going to talk about something called a projection. Okay, the projection of a line onto a plane, you can think of it as the shadow of the line on the plane. Now granted, and that even comment on here, that depends on where you think the light source is when you're making this shadow. But we're, we're not trying to, to trick anybody with this. We're not going to like throw out a question here and, aha, no, you didn't see it this way. No, no, it's, it's basically it's the more obvious uh, answer to all of this. So for example, when, when we want to figure out an angle on a plane here, we have to consider what the, sorry, if you want to figure out the angle between a line and a, and a plane in three dimensions, you have to consider what plane it is that you're, you're using to connect the two of them. So for example, in this case right here, if I wanted to figure out the, the angle between the line segment AC in this prism and the plane that makes up the bottom of the prism, what I'm really looking for here is the projection of AC onto that plane. Now, but in the most obvious way, my light source is going to come from right above. I'm not going to come from over here and shine the light at a kind of a weird angle. I want to make it so that basically the, the shadow is as close to the line segment as possible, which means it's got to be directly below it, that 90 degrees below it. So the projection of AC onto this base plane is going to be the line segment AB. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the angle between AC and AB. Okay, that's, that's how you think about it. Over here, if, if what we want to do here is, uh, what's this one? On the right here, we're going to find the projection of MD onto the base plane. So the midpoint here up to D, we want to find the projection onto the base plane here. So if I want to figure out what the angle is between here and the base plane, okay, well, I got to get that projection here. And what that's going to be when you shine that line straight down, the shadow you're going to get is to be from M to point E, because E is directly below below D here. This line segment that we're drawing here is, is essentially the closest line segment that we're going to get in this plane to this line segment right there. Okay, essentially that angle is the smallest angle that it could possibly be. That's what we're, we're looking for, okay? So with that in mind, let's move ahead and answer some questions. Okay, so for this question right here, you can't actually see it because it's on the bottom of the other page here, but that's okay. What we're trying to do here is I just want you to label the, the line segment that is the projection of each one of these onto the base here. So let's just zoom in on this. So first of all, I want to know what is the name of the line segment that AH gets projected onto. So AH is this one right here. Okay, and I'll use the, the pencil again. AH is this line segment right here. If I'm projecting it down onto the base plane here, well, H is already in the base plane, so that's going to stay the same. But A, when it gets projected down, is going to go to E. So this is going to be the line segment HE. BE, okay, BE is this line segment from B. It's along that back face there. Then I project that onto the base plane plane here, well, E is already on that base plane, so E, actually, and I probably labeled, sorry, when I look back on this, and I probably labeled this one incorrectly here, order is, is likely important here, so this would be E, H. H wouldn't have changed here, just like with this one here, order is probably important if I want to talk about it as a projection. So E, B, uh, E is going to stay the same, but B is going to get projected down onto the F there, so this would be F, E, A, G. Okay, so AG is that line segment that runs basically right across the diagonal of that whole shape. A, when we project it down, is going to go to E, but G is already in that plane. So this is going to get projected onto a, uh, sorry, EG. 
And then over here, we're looking at BH. Okay, BH is actually similar to AG. It's the one that goes right across the diagonal here. Once again, H is in that bottom plane, and so B gets projected onto F. So this is going to become FH. And that is, that is basically it. For this next one right here, uh, the two that we're going to project here are going to be DE and ME. Well, E is up here at this vertex, so we've got D, E, and M, E. The point that we're missing is this one right here, that just directly below the E there. Let's call that F, just for lack of a better letter. So when I project uh, E, D, or sorry, D, E, onto that base plane there, well, D is on that plane, but E becomes F, so that becomes D, F. Whoops. And it's the same thing with, with uh, the M, E. Okay, that line segment right there, when I project that one down, well, it's going to give me this little guy right there. So M is in that plane, M is going to stay untouched, but E is going to become F, MF. So here's another question I want to do with you, and what we want to do here is figure out the angle that each one of these line segments makes with the base plane in this particular figure here. Now, this one is a little bit different because what we've done is we've, we've kind of taken, um, and this is probably true of most of the, the problems that we're going to do in this little section here, we've taken the coordinates out of it. We've basically just giving you the line segments here um, and just talking about, again, the projections here. So if I want to figure out what angle uh, BE makes with the base plane, first of all, I've got to take a look at, at BE. And BE looks like this. It's that line that goes down the diagonal of that back face. Uh, e is already in that plane and B is going to get projected down into F. So here's the projection right there. Uh, this one projected down into um, F, E. So what I want to do is figure out the angle between B, E, and F, E. And so that's going to be this angle right there. Just for right now, we'll call that theta. Uh, because B is going to be perpendicular to, uh, sorry, B, F will be perpendicular to F, E. Okay, I can use just regular trigonometry. Um, I know, based on the diagram here, that CE and BF will be the same, so this will be 8. And I know that the, the length here of FE is going to be the same as AD. I mean, I'm assuming that this is just a nice, predictable, easy to work with shape here. And in fact, it looks like this is supposed to be a square down here. It's got a square base. So this is going to be 12. So I know that that angle, BEF, I can get by doing the inverse tangent. So the tangent of angle BEF is going to equal uh, 8 over 12. And so BEF, angle BEF, will be the inverse tangent of 8 over 12. And now that just becomes calculator work. I'm just going to quickly do this off to the side here. 8 divided by 12. And I'm going to get 34 degrees. Approximately. Okay, I'm, I'm rounding that. Now, CD. Let's go back. Let's erase what we just did there. Clean that up just a little bit. I want to figure out what angle CD makes with the base plane. Now, the beautiful thing about this is that the, this one here, it's really, really drawn out nicely for us because C is up here. It's going to project down to, to E. Uh, D is already in that base plane. And I'm just looking at the side. Basically, I'm just looking at the side of that particular... Uh, shape. I'm just looking at the angle that that makes right there along uh, this edge here. That's, so that's, that's going to be easy to work with. Um, so I knew that this is going to project down into ED. And all I need now is the angle between CD and ED. Well, that's that angle right there. And once again, I can use the tangent. So the tangent of angle, and that's going to be CDE. And I mean, you'll notice every time we we do this that the the vertex that we put in the middle of the angle that was the one that was already in the plane when we when we uh, were looking for the projection here. Now, notice the opposite side here is going to be eight, and the adjacent side here is going to be twelve. Well, wait a minute. I don't even have to go to my calculator. I already know what that's going to be. It's going to be the same thing. So this will be approximately 34 degrees. Okay. There we go. That was nice. 
Let's look over here, BD. Okay, BD. Ah, okay, now BD is a little different. BD goes across this, this face that's off at an angle here, okay? This, this kind of opened up face here. And when I project that onto the, the lower, uh, the base plane here, D is already there, but B is going to project onto F. So what I really need to find is the angle here between BD and line segment FD, okay? All right, well now what I need is, I, I, well I know that this is going to be a, a right angle triangle here, because I know that BF is going to be perpendicular to FD, okay, because BF is in this, this back plane, and I know that that's going to be perpendicular to the, the base plane here. I already know that this length right there is going to be 8, so one of two things. I can either figure out the length uh, along the, the hypotenuse here, or I can figure out the length of, of this right here. And you know what? Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out the length of FD. And I'm going to do that by looking at a different triangle. Okay, so FD is in the, the base plane here. When I connect F to A, that is going to be 12 units. A to D is going to be 12 units. And this is going to be a 90 degree angle right there. That's going to be a right angle triangle. So I can actually just use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out what that, what that length is going to be. Okay, I know that FD okay, is going to be the square root of 12 squared plus 12 squared. Now, when all is said and done, I recognize the pattern here from some earlier work that I've done with triangles. I know that 12 squared plus 12 squared is going to be 144 plus 144. That's going to be 288. And then I can simplify that, okay, and I can make that 12 multiplied by the square root of 2. And if you're, you're not exactly sure how I jumped to that, just take a look at that calculation and just simplify that down. But anyway, so I know that this length right here, FD, is going to be 12 root 2. So now, the tangent of angle BDF is going to be the opposite over the adjacent. And so angle BDF will equal the inverse tangent of the opposite over the adjacent. And now, that just becomes calculator work. And I just go off to the side here. Now, once again, you want to make sure that you are putting the denominator, because the denominator's got more than one factor in it, you're going to want to make sure that you put that denominator in, in parentheses there so that the calculator knows. And I and press enter and I get 25. So roughly, roughly 25 degrees here. See, the frustrating thing is if you don't put that that parentheses there. Let's just take a quick look and see what happens if you don't. So if we go second tangent, go 8 divided by 12 root 2, uh, the calculator is going to interpret that uh, differently. And it's going to give you a different angle there. The thing is, it's not that terribly far off this one. So you might confidently put that down thinking you got the right answer when you, in fact, you didn't. Now, lastly, CM. We want to figure out the angle that CM makes with the base. Now let's connect that up there. So CM is going to be from there down to there. And when I project that down into the base plane, C projects down into E, but M is already down there. So CM is going to become EM in the projection. So that's what I want. I want the angle between EM and CM. Well, I know that CE is going to be perpendicular to the plane, so I know that I'm going to get this right angle right there. And now what I want to do is I want to figure out what uh, the length of either CM is or the length of ME. And, and you know, quite honestly, I'm going to figure out the length of M, uh, ME just because uh, I, I did the same thing in the previous question. I'm just going to be consistent. It's just that now what's happened is We've got a slightly different shape here. When we go to the midpoint here, now this is 6 units and this is 12 units. So what we've done here is we've created a little rectangle in the bottom here. That's what I'm trying to draw here and make this make sense. That ME is the diagonal of a, of a rectangle that's 6 by 12. So ME 
is going to be the square root of 12 squared plus 6 squared. So that's going to be 144 plus 36. And when we take the square root here, um, we are going to get 12 root 5. Now, just hold on a second. I want to make sure I got that right. Oh, no, I did that wrong. Oh, I'm sorry, not 12 root 5. That's got to be, um, I'm sorry. <laughs> Had the right numbers, did the wrong quick calculation. That's 6 root 5. 6 root 5. So here we go. The base here, uh, this along the base here, I should say, this line here is going to be 6 root 5. That height there is going to be 8. So this angle right here in that triangle, you can use tangent, it'll be 8 over 6 root 5. So the tangent of angle CME is going to be 8 divided by 6 root 5. So angle CME will be the inverse tangent of 8 over 6 root 5. And let's just do that. Inverse tangent of 8 divided by 6 root 5. And I get approximately approximately 31 degrees. Okay, and there you go.